of self-discipline as a requirement for successful living. Self-discipline. Although we have been redeemed as priests and kings to reign on the earth, but indiscipline can rob any believer of his throne. We saw a graphic picture there in Ecclesiastes 10, verse 5. There's an evil which I've seen under the sun, an arrow which proceeded from the king, from the ruler, fully set in high places. It's set in great dignity and the rich sit in low places. I've seen servants riding upon horses and princes walking as servants upon the earth. You know what that means? Believers are down, down there. Unbelievers are up up there. He says, "An evil in my sight, because I've done all I needed to do to make you stand out wherever you belong." But he went on to let us know what happened. He that diggeth a piece shall fall into it. Whosoever breaketh an edge, break a covenant, the serpent shall bite. Whosoever removes stone shall be stones shall be endangered there with hot there with, and he that cleaveth wood shall be endangered thereby. So let's find out what went wrong. Verse 16, he said, Woe unto thee, O land, when thy king is a child, and thy princes eat in the morning. But blessed art thou, O land, when thy king is the son, son of the noble, and thy princes eat in due season for strength and not for drunkenness. Now those two verses connote one of the covenants broken by these princes who are working on food while servants are riding on horses. They broke the covenant of discipline. They were playing baby. And here, when he's a child, as long as he's a child, as long as he's a child, it can be 20 years, 50 years, as long as he continues to play the child, does not, it's not different from a servant. Though he be here of all things. But he's under tutors and governors. He needs supervision for anything to work in his hand. Super, he needs to be supervised. He can go in wire at any point. Eyes must be on him. If you send him to the market, you call, continue to monitor whether it's gone there or not. He's a baby. As long as he's a child, he's not different from himself. The throne does not belong to children. <laughs> unto us a child is born. Unto us a son is given. And the government shall be upon the shoulder of the son. Not the child. Indiscipline is a core characteristic of children. Children don't know anything about responsibility. So until you start taking responsibility, you are not a candidate for the throne. I said there in the first service, the opposite of responsibility is liability. You either take responsibility or you end up in liability. So we need to be conscious of the place of self-discipline in a quest to experience and sustain success. It's not just experience success. It's to sustain success. Discipline among others is possessing a sense of mission in the pursuit of life. Know ye not that an erase run all and one receive the pride so wrong that he may obtain. I therefore so wrong, not as one that beat it, not as uncertainly, so fight I, not as one that beat the air. But I keep under my body and bring it into subjection. Come to self-discipline. 
That's self-discipline. That's the definition of it. I bring my body under and bring it into subjection. Lest after I pray to others, I myself should become a castaway. To remain in front, I must keep my body under. Body behave. This is the task for the moment. Only an indisciplined student who will go for his brother's wedding during the exam. And so to take an indisciplined parent to allow it. Most of the indiscipline of our children is visible to us. Tell them that your brother is one man, you have only one brother. Come. He said, happy, but I said, come. Is it not me paying school fees? To do what? Is he to join them? Is he the best man? You know, people just mess up their only line. You don't have a spear. Those who don't have spear tires don't dry it off. I've been there before. You drive carefully, you see cellophane paper, you bend. In case there is a nail inside. What, what nonsense? The boy said, I have paper today, it doesn't matter. You passed last time now. Let them support that one. <laughs> I can tell you, many business people are just dancing around the same point because they have not engaged this law of the spirit of life. Again, my prayer is that every force of indiscipline, manipulating any destiny here, be destroyed today. Discipline can also be defined as operating as demanded, not as convenient. You know, the Bible says, warn to them that he is in Zion. You know, operating as demanded, not as convenient. Just there. We saw Nehemiah work at night and day and night and day and the people with them and they never put off their clothes except for worship but the task was delivered every two days that's not convenient but that was demanded you can't give life what it takes and not make the most of it you so sparingly you read sparingly you so bountifully you read bountifully God is no more Whatever a man sows, and at the level of which he sows, so the level it will, it will reap. Please take that in. Self discipline also is being a law to oneself in a bit to accomplish a given task. All things are lawful, they are okay, they are correct, but they don't add up towards the delivery of the task in my hand. They are not adding to it. They are eroding from it. All things are lawful for me, Paul said, but not all things are expedient. 1 Corinthians 6, 12. All things are lawful for me, but I will not be brought under the power of any. There are places we go that they won't know if it didn't come. So why going? Praise God. If I don't go, they will just say, ah, I didn't go. And they're going to say, ah, so you came. We are not expecting you to come. <laughs> ah, we thought you were busy. We don't know you are this loose. There's nothing you are doing here anyway. So when are you going? That's the reward for your coming. Anywhere you go that does not add value to the people you are going to or to you is a wasted going. Wasted going. No, no, it's my friend since 1962. <laughs> you have not met all your life. I just had to so came. They said, Sir, who are you, sir? Oh, we were friends in this. Said, okay, okay. God bless you. Thank you. And then he walks away. You never see him again. Not that you're looking for anything, but you have nothing to do with your time. Life. 
If you don't make a business of it, you run bankrupt. You don't make a business of living, you go bankrupt with your eyes open. Nobody here will go bankrupt. So, take responsibility. Very quickly, let me show us four areas of our lives where self-discipline will, ap will apply positively. One is our spiritual life. Sustainable success requires being rooted and grounded spiritually. 1 Timothy 4, 7 and 8 Refuse profane and old wife fables Just told you that don't have any meaning But exercise thyself rather unto spirituality Stop listening to junks On TV, on internet Junks, junks, junks But exercise thyself rather unto spirituality for bodily exercise profits little. But godliness or spirituality is profitable unto all things. Having the promise of the life which now is and the one which is to come. A man by name Uzziah gave himself to the things of God as a young ruler. He began to rule at the age of 16. He reigned for 52 years, but he was a life student of Zechariah who had understanding the visions of the Lord. And as long as he saw the Lord, God made him to prosper. In Psalm 1 verse 1 to 3, blessed is a man that does not walk in the counsel of the ungodly. Spirituality also demands careful choice of who you walk with nor stand in the way of sinners, nor sit in the seat of scornful, but whose delight is in the law of his God, and upon it he doth meditate day and night. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. His leaves also shall not wither. He will bring forth the fruits in the season, and whatsoever he doeth, it shall prosper. Spiritual robustness is the security of our destiny. Spirituality is simply scripturality. Living by the dictates of scriptures. Living by the dictates of scripture. This next area where self-discipline imparts on our life is in the work of our hand. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 verse 11 Study to be quiet And to do your own business And to work with your own hands As we commanded you Do your own business Invest the best of your time, energy, and resources in your own business. I've been out of this church on Sunday morning since 1999, 20 years ago, three Sundays. I go to anywhere in the world. I'm back on my job. I'm not a preaching merchant. I go to places only when I'm directed. If I follow every invitation that I receive, I won't be here one Sunday. But I'll be making a fool of my life. Because I'll be, I will give account on my assignment. Not on somebody else's assignment. I was in Kaduna Church last 1999. On a Sunday morning. 20 years ago. 
I was in Abekuta Church. Our church in Abekuta, we have a network there now. The main church, I was there last 1996. Hmm. Study to be quiet. Do your own business. All those pastors will give account over the churches where they are. But I must give account over this one. You can't oversee what you don't see. No. You can't. Amen. That's how self discipline distinguishes people. Self discipline is your guarantee for sustainable success. Otherwise, you see it today and never see it again. I'm going about. Now, wait a minute. Shino is in December. I started work already on Shino. This is April. I know the team, but I won't tell you. So you can be going with what you are doing right now. When it's time, you'll be told. There are many things to say to you, but you can't need, you don't need them. Glory to God. No, it's not a place to be guessing and say the Lord will speak to you and go to the platform. No, no, no. God doesn't speak to careless people. May your life be cladded with self-discipline as a lifestyle from now. In 1 Peter chapter 4 verse 15, he said, don't suffer as busy body in other men's matters. That's discipline. Self-discipline. Stay on your job. Discipline yourself to deliver your own assignment. Wish everybody had as well and keep going number three area that self-discipline impacts on our life is in the management of our time time management time management Benjamin Franklin once said doth thou love life Then invest your time. Don't squander it. For that is the stuff life is made up of. No value for time. You start losing value without knowing. Our part of the world needs this a <laughs> lot. Wake up in the morning, you are going to greet somebody. Okay, for what? It's a long time I saw him. Yeah. Did you hear anything about him? No. I just felt like saying him. Then you now drive about three hours to go and greet somebody. You now get there, they say he's not at home. You say, I will wait. <laughs> I mean, in this one life you have, only Jesus has a second coming. All of us is only one coming. You miss it, you miss it. Amen. If they call you Baba Tunde, it's just an accolade, it's a nickname. It's appointed to one man, whether Baba or Mama, wants to die. And after that, wants to die. And after that, since you don't have a spare life, why don't you make the most of this one? It's a redeeming the time because the days are evil. Ephesians 5 16. Now, in Colossians 4 5, he said, Walk in wisdom. So it is it is lack of wisdom by scriptural definition. We don't matter without redeeming the time. Redeeming the time. I love the story that was told in the third service of John Wesley. Somebody was talking to him, it was 20 minutes. He shouted when the man won't stop. I've just lost 20 minutes of my life. <laughs> Listen to John. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> time! They call it lifetime. That is what your time was worth while you lived. You know why I don't sleep on time? You sleep 8 hours. That's one third of your life. So when you are 75, you have slept for 25 years. <laughs> you are unconscious. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Just 
check out on people with correct sense of value for time, they don't stop making progress. 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 One of our leaders in this country said when he was in power that there was no event he invited me for that I had time. He was saying it positively. People should know you for your job. They should know where you belong. Where they call you, you are going. Where they don't call you, you are going. Where you are relevant, you are going. Where you are irrelevant, you are going. Where you are body, you are going. You know what I mean? Amen. And then by the time you want to sleep, it's a way for you to leave. You have not left. They say, where are you staying? I will stay here. Amen. Don't leave that. Please manage your time well. All things are lawful, but not all things are expedient. Invest your time in what is profitable, what is value added, not just anything that comes. In harvest and have nothing. Proverbs 13 2 or 13 4. He shall beg in harvest. The heritage of the slothful is begging. And the same is with his brother because they share a common heritage. Every waster we end up a beggar, just like every slothful, lazy, idle man we end up a beggar. And we saw that graphically demonstrated in the life of the son in Luke 15, verse 13 to 16. Is wasted is substance on riotous living. Then there arose a great famine in the land and he began to be in want and was begging to share food with peace. Every waster today will be a beggar tomorrow. No scripture cancels out another. No matter the blessing a licking drum, no matter the volume of water, Going up, going up, going up. If you don't deal with waste, your giving will be wasted. It won't show. It won't show. <laughs> it won't show. A common example is this, is, uh, this plague of telephone. It's a plague. The money some men spend on telephone, they will never give to their family for food. And 80-90% of what they are saying is no business. Hello, how are you? Eh? You have not been calling me. You know calling is our business. No budget. Free spending. Pay as you go. It just starts, man. This is the largest telephone market in the entire world, Nigeria. If we ban telephone now, many co companies will close down. This is where a human being will buy a 10,000 pounds handset. Handset. As small as I am, I'm not on contract phone. I pay what I have budgeted. You can't exceed it. There is no pay as you go advert in my life. Pay as budgeted. There are laborers today who do daily work and have two phones. It's only in Nigeria. Hello, hold on. Come. You? Yes. 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 You too, hold on. I'm coming. Okay. I'm sorry to have kept you on the line saying. I mean, somebody call you and is on the line there and you are not talking to him and you can't put it off. And you are not charmed. Waste. We have a wasteful culture hanging on our lives. No budget, no control. The same man is borrowing money for school fees. He has telephone the fees. He has telephone the fees. Sir, if there were mobile phones when this ministry started, we will not buy it. 
you should know that. I saw down the whole telephone of our office, 1995 or so, or in the old church. I disconnected. It was night. Time. <laughs> and I said, what to spend on phone last month as cover next month? You will not phone anybody. Amen. But there are people who go beyond my budget today who don't have access to one over 100 of resources I have access to because there's no budget. Hello, 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 hello. I say nothing. Uh -huh. Okay, so you are going. Yes. When are you coming back? Yes. <laughs> when you come back, will you call me? No. Okay, I will call you. <laughs> In my view, there are levels of staff that should be banned from telephone. Ban or if the woman is saying, let's ban them. It's all about life. When people started paying for the power they consume on this ground, self-discipline. Many people use their phone light to go to the toilet. <laughs> Prepaid. When your charge goes, the light goes. <laughs> Glory to God. And nobody will ask you what's happening. There's nothing happening. You are the one happening. <laughs> Please take responsibility. It is the pathway to sustainable success. The pathway to sustainable. You must leave this service today and put a budget on your telephone ministry. Amen. Put a budget on it. Now, in the name of Jesus, my telephone will never exceed my tithe till I die. First law. Number two, under no circumstance will I spend beyond this for telephone as long as I'm this at this level. My father died, I had a budget. It's not free spending. My mother died, I had a budget. My father-in-law died, I had a budget. There is no method you can use to exceed that budget. There is no method. Anybody's crying, is inside that budget. <laughs> Anybody want to eat, is inside that budget. <laughs> should, I now, should I die because they died? And you know that there is nobody who can make me borrow one dime to do anything. Please settle down. Life is in faces and men are in sizes. Your life will never be under burden anymore. Let me hear your loudest amen. Amen.